Hello and welcome to another episode of 10 Questions to MRCOG Mastery. We will turn our focus on breast anatomy in this video. It is said that breast is nothing but modified sweat glands. That may be true, but there are important details about the breast that you need to know for your exam. So let's get going. Here is the basic anatomy of the breast. I'm simply going to label the structures for you and I want you to have a really good look at these and then we will move on to the 10 questions that we have on breast anatomy. In the figure, I want you to take note of the nipple, areola, ducts, alveoli, the supporting tissue. And when we blow up the alveoli, I want you to take note of the outer muscle cells and the inner milk secreting cells. Right, let's get down to the 10 questions. Let's achieve MRCOG mastery. Question one, how many lobes does each breast have? The answer is 15 to 20 lobes, with each radiating out from the nipple. The main duct from each lobe opens separately on the nipple, as shown in the figure. Question two, why is the areola important? Areola is the darker circular area around the nipple. It is important because it contains numerous sebaceous glands which secrete an oily substance. This oily substance acts as a lubricant and protects the nipple from chafing and irritation from suckling. Question three, what hormones promote breast growth? The general growth of the breast is promoted by, you guessed it, growth hormone, parathyroid hormone, thyroid hormone, cortisol and insulin. The duct growth is promoted by estrogen and the alveolar or the glandular growth is promoted by progesterone. Question four, what are the key changes to the breast during pregnancy? You should be able to predict these. Here are the five changes you need to know. The duct system develops rapidly with numerous new branches under the influence of estrogen. So that's the first change. The second change is that there are more and more new alveoli forming at the end of the smaller ducts under the influence of progesterone. The third change is that the vascularity of the breast increases to provide nutrients to the glands. The fourth change in pregnancy is that the nipple enlarges and the areola becomes darker. And finally, the fifth change is that during the second half of pregnancy, the alveoli produce a fluid called colostrum under the influence of prolactin and human placental lactogen. Question five, what is the blood supply to the breast? There are three sources of blood supply. First, medially perforating branches of the internal thoracic artery, which is also known as the internal mammary artery. Second, laterally branches from the axillary artery. Third, inferiorly the intercostal arteries. The venous drainage corresponds to the arterial supply. Question six, what is the lymphatic drainage of the breast? Lateral two thirds of the breast drains into the axillary area, which is why it is vital to examine the axilla as part of your breast examination. The medial third drains into the lymphatic system of the mediastinum. Superiorly, the lymphatic drainage is into the infraclavicular nodes. It is important to remember that there is free communication between all the lymphatic channels. Question seven, what is the nerve supply to the breast? Two lots of nerves you need to know. The first is the supraclavicular nerves which have the roots of C3 and C4. And the second is the intercostal nerves, which have the roots from 
T3, T4, T5, and T6. Question 8. What hormones stimulate the muscle cells of the alveoli to contract? The answer is oxytocin. So oxytocin is needed for milk ejection. Question 9. What hormone stimulates milk secretion cells in the alveoli to make milk? The answer is prolactin. Question 10. The final question. How do you conduct a breast examination? Well, the first step is that with a patient undressed to the waist and sitting upright, you inspect for symmetry, any swelling and any skin lesions. Ask the patient to raise both arms above the head and again inspect for symmetry, dimpling of skin and nipple retraction. The second step, ask the patient to lie down on her back and examine the nipples and then palpate the breasts in a systematic fashion. Most people would do it clockwise. The point here is to be very systematic and not miss any areas. The third step is to examine the axilla and supraclavicular area for lymph nodes. So that is MRCOG Mastery in 10 questions. I look forward to seeing you in another MRCOG video or perhaps even at our intensive weekend MRCOG course. Until we meet again, have fun with your revision. Mm -hmm.